All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to this month's edition of Cyber Smart Briefs. We're going to be talking about the mother of all breaches um, and what you need to know about it. Something you may have seen in the news, it is um, a large breach. We'll get more into the details later on, but just something we wanted to talk about and talk about what's relevant. So on the call today from our team is myself, Joe Jurgens. I'm one of the account managers. I'm also be being joined by Kyle Harris and TJ Horner from our team. Uh, for those of you guys who have never been here before, uh, these are reoccurring uh, little webinars that we do. It's about five minutes of content. We leave a lot of time for Q&A. They happen the third Tuesday of every month. Um, and you know we just want to have these as sort of end user general security tips on how to be safe in today's cyber world. Um, we do want some feedback on in input into other security topics. You know, we have Q and A being monitored throughout the session, which you can find in the top left of bo or top right side on the far left. Um, so, you know, your suggestions can help us figure out what you want to learn about, what's important to you, and we want to make sure that these stay relevant to you. So. You know, hopping into it here, let's get started talking about the Moab or the mother of all breaches. It was first publicized on January 22nd by a research team, and the data actually all appears to come from Leak Lookup, which is a data breach search engine. The uh, supermassive leak contains 12 terabytes of data, which is over 26 billion records uh, stored in 3,800 different folders. Each folder references a different data breach. So it is a combination of multiple breaches. Um, Fortunately, reachers say that likely some of this data is reposted. Um, however, it could be at minimum 11 billion records of new data. But again, researchers are still studying this breach and the extent of the information included. You know, some of this data contains far more than just user credentials and has private data included. This could be things such as credit card numbers, potentially conversations scrubbed for data and messages. Again, the scope just isn't quite known at this point. Um, you know, and again, due to the size of that data, it's really hard to tell how much is new. Researchers are still cataloging and studying the data to figure out what's new, what's duplicated, and what's already been involved in previous data leaks. Again, it's a massive amount of data, and this could take some time for people to comb through everything. So, you know, we think it's beneficial to put some perspective into the size of this leak. Um, 12 terabytes is a lot of data. You know, according to Dropbox, 12 terabytes of data is enough for about 6,000 hours of HD video, which is about 3,000 movies, or 250 full days of HD video playing. Um, it'd be equal to about 3 million selfies on the latest iPhone camera. Um, that would be an selfie for every single resident of Chicago. And again, just for some more perspective, a two-page Word document is about 110 kilobytes. Um, there's over 1 billion kilobytes in a terabyte. It's about 117 million Word documents contained in this um, store or in this breach. So um, where the data is actually coming from um, is coming from all sorts of different places. Again, it's cataloged into those 3,800 different folders with each referencing a different data breach. You know, these records come from, so, or a lot of these records are from social media with over 2 billion records from uh, Weibo and Tencent, which are Chinese messaging applications. However, MySpace, Twitter, Wattpad all have 270 million records le leaked each. Um, I believe Twitter was the highest of those with 360 million records being leaked. Um, other sources of the data include Adobe and Canva, which are both popular for the graphic design tools. There's actually some governmental data in the breach as well, mostly from local governments in US, Brazil, Germany, Philippines, and Turkey. Um, specifically from the US, I saw there was breaches from the state of Washington and Florida involved. Um, so, you know, with that amount of data, obviously there's going to be some impact. So you might be thinking, well, what's the impact? What should I be worried about? And to be honest, the impact could be unprecedented. The scope of the breach is massive, and the data may be used in a few different 
ways. Um, identity theft is obviously a big concern with this breach. From what experts are saying, the data may have private information, such as social security numbers and the like within it. This very well means that threat actors could use this for opening up credit card accounts to get loans or cash fraudulent checks. Um, these efforts could also include password spraying or credential stuffing, which is where threat actors use credentials gained in this attack across many different sites to see if they can gain access elsewhere. You know, they're cashing in on you reusing passwords across multiple sites uh, and we'll just try that same username and password wherever they can uh, you also may see them mine the data for personal information and use that for spear phishing attacks even potentially leveraging ai for that where they're training ai on um you know some things from your past to make it seem like you're talking to a friend or something when in actuality it's somebody trying to get information that they can use to you know, either steal your identity or even get password info, whatever they can from you. Um, the last impact that you might expect is um, experience is greatly level increase or greatly increased levels of spam. With threat actors gaining lists of usernames and emails, they can send more spam your way. And again, the scale of this attack or this breach is massive. We really don't know how much of this data is repeated or how much of it's actually going to be used. So how to protect yourself is there's obviously steps you need to take, both proactively and reactively to help ensure sure that you're secure online you know passwords should be complex and long think passphrase and not password use a combination of uppercase lowercase numbers and symbols in your password mfa 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 on everything we're past the point of it being a recommendation only should be considered a requirement if you use an app or service that dot does not have MFA, ask them to add it. Some companies are slow to react to changes and encouragement from users should get them moving in the right direction. You know, use a password manager. These are great at letting people know if you've reused a password. Um, and if you know you've reused passwords, go in and change them. Be proactive about this so that you can ensure your security online. And the last thing you can do is signing up for alerting. Again, this data hasn't been processed. Go get signed up for alerting on your email. It's really easy to do. You know, we're going to cover that in the next slide here. And this is how easy it is. You just go to haveibeenpwned.com, click on notify me, and type in your email. It's two steps. Any email that you're actively using to log into websites with, just do it. I've already got my work email and two of my personal emails in here. Um, I am getting my family registered for it, it's awesome. Get signed up right away. The other thing you can do is you can type your email in right down where it says pwned question mark and it'll just show you every breach that your email has been involved in that they have cataloged currently. So we do have some other helpful resources. Um, obviously, here is one of the articles about this breach from Malwarebytes, the mother of all breaches, 26 billion records found online. And I believe TJ is going to be posting those links into the chat for everyone, or you can just scan the QR code with your phone. Um, the next one is actually 2FA directory. So this is a directory of all sorts of different web services and applications that have MFA enabled. And you can see what MFA processes they have, if it's text or email, or if you're even able to use an application like Microsoft Authenticator app with it. But let's open up the floor for questions. 